God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we all stand our feet? We are going to pray. Amen. Let's bow down our head. Father God, we want to thank you. We want to bless you. We want to praise you. We want to lift you up. Jesus, we pray and ask you to help us understand the word. So that the understanding of the word will help us apply the word for your glory. We rebuke any distraction, any work of the devil, any yoke of the enemy. Make the ground a good ground, a good ground for the seed coming from the word to bear fruit in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to talk about uh, the power and the necessity of fasting. The power and the necessity of fasting. The power and the necessity of fasting. Amen. Fasting is powerful and fasting is must do. It is very important to integrate fasting in our life. Amen. Fasting is one of the pillars of our spiritual life. Yes, amen. You cannot replace fasting by anything else. Amen. You cannot. Amen. Prayer cannot replace fasting. Fasting cannot replace prayer. They are both important. Amen. The word of God cannot replace fasting. Fasting cannot replace the word of God. There are all the three of them. Prayer, fasting, and the word important. Amen. These three elements must be in your spiritual life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, I want to explain that because it's important to understand. There's many components in life that are against fasting. Your human side hates fasting. The flesh does not like to fast. The flesh does not even want to hear that word fasting. As soon as you, you said fasting or you hear fasting, the flesh is start thinking. Yes. Amen. And bringing all kind of arguments. Oh, yeah. And all kind of reason. Mm -hmm. And all kind of excuse. <laughs> yes. But fasting is a mass. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. Amen. The word of God is the food that nourish your spiritual body. As a food, human food, nourish your human body. Somebody who does not read the word of God is not feeding his, himself yes, or herself. Amen. amen. So as you keep doing that, yes. you are going to die because you will agree with me that human is speaking. If somebody is not eating food, human is speaking, it will be just a matter of time. Amen. So if you don't read the Bible, right. it is just a matter of time. Just a matter of time. So keep in mind... The word of God is the food that nourish your soul. Hallelujah. Prayer is the oxygen, is the breathing that refresh your whole soul. So prayer is important. Somebody who does not breathe is called a dead person. Yes, amen. If you stop breathing and you do that purposely, you're going to die. Man, in fact, nobody can do that anyway. Amen. <laughs> Trying to close your nose and your mouth. Even if you don't want to release your hands, somehow you're going to find your way removing your hand Amen. from your nose. Yes. Because you need to breathe. Yes. So prayer is a mass. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If somebody eats food and drink and does not use the restroom, at all. It will be just a matter of time. A matter of time. 
Because your stomach is going to blow. That's right. If you keep eating and you don't find a way to whatever you're eating is not going out, it's a problem. Fasting is the cleaning system. Yes, it is. That Amen. Clean your own body. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a system that flush all the impurity, all yes, the charcoal, indeed. the obstacle, yes. the oppositions, oh the thing that you don't need. Fasting is going to melt those things and remove them with uh, spiritual soap. Yes, Fasting Jesus. is the spiritual soap. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. We understand that the blood of Jesus Christ uh, is the washing yes. us. But what I'm saying is that fasting is what is going to boost the system. Amen. Um, people who um, never draw, drive a uh, uh, stick shift before may not understand what I'm talking about. Yes. But for the people who live overseas, most of the car are stick shift, right? Like in Europe or some yes. places. So when you take uh, like a, a mountain, you always want to, you know, bring the gears down so that the car can have more power to climb the mountain. Amen. 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 So that's what fasting does. When things get tough, fasting come in to boost that. Oh, amen. Fasting Hallelujah. Fasting is like a bulldozer that plow the road. Yes, the amen. The devil is afraid yes, of is. fasting. Yes, he is. Fasting is the jockey. It's, uh, it's what you have in the side that uh, when things get tough, you put on the table. When yes. you put fasting there, the devil become quiet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So fasting is, there's a power in fasting, and you must fast. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's take our Bibles. We are going to read, brother and sister. Amen. We are going to read in Matthew chapter 17, uh, from verse 14 to 21. So when I was talking about the, 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 that there's a lot of components that doesn't like fasting, the body, the human body is one. The devil doesn't like fasting. Your doctor don't like, doesn't like fasting. Right? Medical field, don't, don't go there and tell them about uh, you are going to fast for whatever disease they are talking about. They will strongly dis discourage you to do that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And uh, sometimes our relatives, the people who live, who, who, uh, sometimes you just want to be quiet. Because as soon as they found out that you're not eating, they're going to try to convince you to eat. And they can even fight you. Yeah. Why are not eating? Yeah. What is wrong with eating? Amen. What's the problem with food? <laughs> Amen. They have no idea. No idea. Amen. Amen. The society does not like fasting. The human mind, the human set, the whole thing that is in the atmosphere is that human being has to eat every day. Yeah. And drink every day. Yeah. But with God, Amen. there is time in your life. Well, you got to stop eating. Amen. Because look, let me explain you something. It's important to understand. There's a two components in you. You have your human body. You have your soul. These are the two components. Your human body have no access to heaven. The human body is not allowed in heaven. The human body is not welcome in heaven. No. Your soul is the only one oh. who is welcome in heaven. Yes, indeed. Your Amen. soul is the, actually the most Ooh. important part of you. You are not your human body. Your human body age, but your soul will never age. Never. Your soul is oh, spiritual. Yes. Okay, so you cannot feed both at the same time. Let me explain that again. You cannot feed your soul and your body at the same time. Please Amen. understand that. Yeah. Fasting... Is a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a feeding mode of your soul. Amen. Let me repeat that again. When you fast, when you stop eating, then you are feeding your soul. Oh, amen. Amen. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Understand that. Yes, amen. It's a switch. Yes. It's a switch. Amen. So you want to be fair and also take care of your soul. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible talks about the people who are human, human minded. Oh, yeah. Some people are human minded people. Right. The first thing when they wake up in the morning is to have that food. No, some people are like that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I remember one day back, I was in Europe. 
we're in a church where they don't emphasize on fasting. Coming from Africa, we arrived there, and then uh, we, after a while in the church, the pastor was a very open person, and uh, he, uh, he wanted to, people to know about fasting, and so he asked us to do some teaching about it, to uh, organize the church so that we can integrate fasting. And uh, so uh, as we start talking about it, there's this one person who said, uh, he's talking about de dehydration. That, uh, no, if, if he doesn't drink water, he's talking about all kind of steam about the human body trying to explain science that uh, if you need, you need uh, there's a uh, 60 uh, liter of water in our body. If you don't drink, you're going to have a problem. I talk a lot. And that person was a deacon in the church. And so I look at him and I say, you know what, let me tell you one thing. As far as I know, Jesus Christ didn't bring a gallon of water in the wilderness Whoa. when he went there to fast. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. And I told him also that, listen, let me tell you something. There's no way, if you're doing that for God, there's no way something will happen to you. Amen. Jesus, we're not going to let you Jesus die because you are fasting. It. It's impossible. He will not allow it. Amen. So we Amen. end up understanding that. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have another person who said to me, again, in Europe, he said, oh, well, he doesn't want to fast. And uh, he's trying to fight me because I, I was talking about fasting. And so he doesn't understand why I keep talking about it. And the pastor also is backing me up. So the, some people in the church have started fasting. And so the people who are not fasting, they found themselves now they are the minority. Because the majority of people now are integrating fasting. So he was upset. He came to me and said, oh, well, you keep talking about fasting. In fact, the reason why... You always talk about fasting. is because in Africa, there's no food down there. So it's because of the fact that you guys are not used for food. That's why you guys can fast easily. But as far as I know, Moses was not African. No, that's right. Eh? <laughs> David was not born in Africa. Amen. Amen. Am I correct? That's correct. Esther, King Esther, Queen Esther, she was not born in Africa. No. It has nothing to do with location. Demons are everywhere. So you want to be able to fast no matter what. That's right. So just to, to kind of set the atmosphere so that you can understand. Now, listen this. For all the people like this around you, including some close people in your family to be against that, that means that the devil is afraid of that. That's right. Because God is the only one who loves it. Amen. Amen. That means there's something about fasting. Yes. Because the unbelievers are against that. Even some Christians are against that. Then you should understand, hey, that's the key right there. The key right there. You always want to do what the devil doesn't like. That's right. Hallelujah. That's the power for success. <laughs> if the devil doesn't like something, that's exactly what you want to do. That's it. The opposite. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 17, 14 to 21. I'm going to make sure we get it done. In, the, in time. Amen. Matthew chapter 17 from 14 to 21. Please, my brother, my sister, you must integrate fasting in your spiritual life. If you don't fast, something is missing. Amen. Matthew chapter 17 from 14 to 21. When you find it, Pastor, we can read Matthew 17 from 14 to 21. And when they came to the multitude, mm -hmm. a man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying. So him here is uh, Jesus. The man came to Jesus Christ, okay? Uh -huh. Lord, have mercy on my son, mm -hmm. for he is an epileptic, and he suffers severely. He often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Okay, stop there. Wow. So the man is bringing his son to Jesus Christ. As we all in our families have some people who need uh, some level of help. Amen. Hallelujah. This man did not do anything to have a son born epileptic. Amen. And anybody can have a, that kind of situation. That's why uh, uh, in life, uh, and sometimes men don't always understand that. Uh, when a woman goes through a process, nine months, all the way to the time where the baby is born, it's a miracle. It is. Because at every step in the process, 
something can happen. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. And so it is, a, it is a long process, very important process. I remember when my daughter was born in Minneapolis um, in 2005, February 10, 2005. I was in the room. My wife and I, we went to the hospital morning. And uh, the, my our daughter was born the next day at 2 a.m. So we de- went there. The, the day we went there, she was born after midnight, 2 a.m. Amen. the next day. It was a long process. And at the end, I was in the room after our daughter, Hannah Grace, was born. Uh, the doctor uh, gave uh, the baby to me. And then uh, my wife responded quick. Let me see, let me see, let me see. But she said I with her. You can see that she she's that I mean she was so happy she started crying oh, because it's a long process. Okay, so this man here going back to the scripture, he did not do anything to be in that situation. So it's something that can happen to anybody. The son is what epileptic, and look at what happened. It is sometimes what he's cast into the fire and fire, water. Fire and water. Think about who 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 wants to be in the fire. Think about that. Which yeah. means this son probably has uh, some bruises. He has some scarf yeah, and thing like that, yeah. right? And uh, it, I, as we know, this thing can happen at any time. Somebody who is epileptic, they they cannot forecast when it's gonna happen. That's right. Amen. And so he went. He brought his son to whom? To the dis- disciple. To the disciples. What happened there? They could not cure him. They could not do that. The disciples are Christians like you and me. So the reason why he brought to my view, my own interpretation, is that the reason why he brought it to the disciples, he did actually the right thing. Because Jesus is one man for the whole entire area. This man is the most busiest guy on earth. He can be busier than Jesus Christ. Amen. So the guy understood that because the disciple, there's something called training. Because the disciples have been with this man for a certain time, I must go to them. Yes. Because if they really learn how this thing works, they should be able to do it. Yes. So I'm going to make it easy for Jesus Christ. Leave the master alone and go to the disciple. Yes. For I believe that that same spirit that was upon Jesus yes. is upon them. Yes. Right. That's why he went to the, to the people, to Amen. the disciples. Guess what happened? They were not able to solve the problem. We have been called by God to address any sort of problem, any kind of problem. Amen. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, let's keep going, my brother. So now the report is that the disciples were not able to do it. Now he's going to Jesus Christ, right? He has to go to the ladder up, to the, st- to the step up, right? He's going now to Jesus Christ himself. Okay, keep going. Then Jesus answered and said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? Okay, let's stop there. Read again one more time. And Jesus answered and said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation. Okay, so faithless, it means lack of faith. And then perverse, perverse is, is not talking about sexual perversion. It's because these people are following two systems. The mind is not renewed yet. Right? They are with Jesus but they are also following the world, oh, amen. right? They are using the humans, you, human understanding. Therefore, they are pervert amen. because they are going after two different things. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So Jesus used tough word against the disciples. Yes, he did. Amen. Keep going, Pastor. Yes. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring here, bring him here to me. Okay, he's now asking to bring the son to him. Hallelujah. Keep going. And Jesus rebuked the demon. And Jesus rebuked the demon. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. From that very hour. Uh, We talk about uh, that a little bit uh, in the beginning of fasting, but I want to explain that at the church level. Please, please, please write it down. It's very important what I'm going to say here. It's very important. Okay. There is a healing and there is deliverance. They are not the same. Amen. There is a healing and there is deliverance. They are not the same. 
a true healing can only take place if there is deliverance. Write yes, it down. Amen. If you go in a church where they don't believe in deliverance, don't ask them to pray for healing for you. That's right. It is not going to work. Amen. Let me repeat that. If you go, if somebody is praying for you, for healing, yeah. say you have some situation that requires prayer for healing. Yeah. Ask that person if he believes in deliverance first. Amen. Because read, my brother, read just what you just read. And Jesus rebuked the demon. So the, the son, the guy has what? What, 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 is, what, is, what was the disease? What was that? What was the sickness? Epileptic. Epileptic. So he's sick. Yes. Right? But look at, Jesus is not praying for his healing. What Jesus is doing? Jesus rebuked the demon. He's doing deliverance first. Because of sickness is caused by demon. Amen. Amen. Am I correct? That's correct. Sickness. Come from, from demons. Demon. If you don't cast them out, there's no way somebody can be healed. Because the oh, reason yeah. why he's sick is because of a demon. demon is in him. My God. So what Jesus did first, step number one, he, he cast out. the demon. Yes. And then what happened? Read that. Yes. What is following? And Jesus rebuked the demon, mm -hmm. and it came out of him. It came out. Deliverance and, happened, right? Right. Okay, keep going now. And the child was cured from that very hour. That's it. Step number two. Healing is taking place. Amen. Amen. In fact, let me say this. Somebody who is 100% demon free cannot be sick unless Amen. God allowed that. Amen. Because sometimes, like Paul in the situation, yes. God allowed an infirmity. He said that. God told him, right, that my grace is, too, is too sufficient. Amen? Yes, amen? So my point, the point I'm trying to make here is this. Sickness is caused by demons. Demon. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Praise the Lord. it is. Amen. Amen. And it is important for every one of you to understand that. Let's go in, uh, in uh, uh, Mark chapter 16 and read for me, Pastor Eric, verse 17 and 18. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. One more time. Mark chapter 16, 17 and 18. Pay attention to the reading. About, it's about healing and deliverance. Amen. Go ahead and read, Pastor Eric. And these signs shall follow those who believe. These signs shall follow those who believe. Let's see sign number one. In my name, they will cast out demons. It's the very first one Jesus Christ is talking about. The very first sign is that they, they must be able to cast out demons. Because demons are the basic foundation of all kind of problems. Amen. Amen. Sure, amen. Okay, sign number two. Keep going. And they will speak with new tongues. Sign number two. Okay, let's go to the next one. They will take up serpents. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly. And if they drink anything deadly. It will by no means hurt them. Okay, so, so far, we are not talking about healing. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. We're not talking about healing. No. Keep going. They will lay hands on the sick, mm -hmm. and they will recover. Amen. The first sign is deliverance. The last sign is a healing. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And uh, my brother, my sister... The, 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 those signs, we're not saying that you have to be bishop, pastors, or no. elder. You have to have a title in the church. He said, these signs will follow those who, who believe. believe. You just have to believe. believe. That's why he died. He make yes. it so easy. Yes. Just believe. believe. Jesus said to Jairus, don't be afraid. Believe. Only, Only believe. believe. Man. So it is important. So Jesus is going to uh, keep going, Pastor Rick. So now we're going back to Matthew 17. Hallelujah. What verse are we? 19. Verse 19. Amen. Matthew 17, verse 19. Okay, go ahead. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and okay, said. Okay, so now understand this. The disciple came. Read, read that part, uh, 19. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and mm -hmm. said. Mm -hmm. 
Why could we not cast it out? Okay, so why, why they came privately? Because, in fact, they're trying to figure out why they were not able to do it. Amen. I, everybody understand that? Yes. Because, to my, again, my own interpretation, for them to come privately like this to us, it means that what Jesus did, they did the same thing. Amen. And they don't understand why the same word or maybe the same thing they did, is, it didn't work. Yes, amen. So now they want to find out why. You must know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Amen. Okay? Let's see how Jesus is going to respond. So Jesus said to them, mm -hmm. because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. So in other words, faith is a must. Amen. Amen? Faith, yes. it's important in deliverance. Right. Okay, keep going. For surely I say to you, mm -hmm. if you have faith as a mustard seed, mm -hmm. You should say to this mountain, mm -hmm. move from here to mm -hmm. there, and it will move, okay, and so nothing will be impossible for you. And nothing will be impossible. So the first thing is what? Faith. Faith. Okay, keep going, Pastor Rick. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Amen. Three things you need. Faith, prayer, and fasting. If you, if you just believe, yes, indeed, you will be able to do some stuff. But you won't be able to do all the stuff. You won't be able to deal with all type of demons. To be able to cast them all out. In other words, to be able to close your mind, your, heart, your, your eyes, and be able to do it. It means you have to have these three factors. Fasting, Amen. prayer, and uh, faith. Faith, yes. faith, prayer, prayer and fasting. fasting. Jesus said, however, read verse 21. However, this kind does this, not go. This kind does not go because there's different kind. But yes. this particular one can only go for the people who fasted. Amen. Only the people who pray and fast and have faith can do that. Amen. Which means the disciples were not able to do it. Because of their unbelief, unbelief, and because of a lack of prayer, and yes. because of lack of fasting. fasting. Remember that Jesus was not pleased that they couldn't even pray for one hour. That's right, amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So my bottom line, if you want the devil to leave you alone, Hallelujah. fully and 100% alone, we do. please believe, pray, pray and fast. fast. That's Hallelujah. all. We got to tell you the truth. Amen. That's right. And when Jesus said that, this verse 21 is so powerful that in the New International Version of the Bible, they delete that. It's not there. That's right. Please, check Look that. Yep, that's right. Check it out for yourself. Amen. In New International, NIV, they go 20 and they jump to 22. 21 is not there. Wow. Amen. The yeah. people hate fasting. They do. As the devil hate, hate fasting. fasting. <laughs> in Roseville, the church where Pastor Eric and myself and his wife and my, uh, my family were all attending, Brother Jason was there as well. At that yes. time, he was not married. That church where we're going, yes. one day there's a lady. Uh, she was in the 60s, 70s, 60s, somewhere there. And uh, I was talking about fasting, and then uh, she was uh, curious, and she came and asked a lot of questions about fasting. And, you know, she didn't come in a ne negative way or trying to contradict, right? But she wanted to find out. Amen. And uh, as I was talking to her, you know, sometimes you make statements, you don't really pay attention to it, but it resounds in somebody's heart. And so I told her, well, uh, if, uh, because she said that, no, fasting is uh, too difficult. I, I really cannot do it. And what I said to her is that, uh, well, if, if you cannot do it, or if you think it's too difficult, that means at least you and the devil agree on something. There is something, some common ground there. <laughs> but I said I, I didn't pay attention to it. So about a couple months after, she came to me. At that time, I was not pastor. I was a prayer member. She said, Brother Francois, what you said to me a couple of months ago, 
it, it resounded in my head. I couldn't take it out. <laughs> and because I don't want to have any agreement with the devil, yes, I decided to fast. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Hallelujah. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Lord. Amen. Yeah, please, don't have any Woo, common ground Jesus. with the devil. No, no way. No, no, no common ground. No, no agreement. The devil is afraid of fasting. Yes, if you also are afraid of fasting, yes. then at least you have a common ground with the devil. Amen. And you don't want that. Do Amen. the opposite. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Hallelujah. So it is important to add fasting in your life. Amen. Now we're going to move quick because of the time. Amen. Um, we talk about the people's opinion and, you know, the, all the whole uh, situation about fasting, whatever, that people are trying to bring. Don't let the people convince you. You have to fast. Amen. Because you want to be able to deal with all kinds of demons. demons. Amen. Right. Some prayer require fasting. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. Now, I want to talk about the attitude that we have to have when we fast. Amen. Amen. The attitude that we have to have. When you fast, and you got to be now switching the teaching mode quick because this is an area that's like a black, it's a black boss. Nobody talks about it. Nobody wants to deal with that. Oh. They have all kind of reasons. Yes. Uh, again, w w in that church where we were going, yes. there were a lady who were visiting the church. She was not from our church. And then uh, she, is, she came to me and she said, uh, uh, the, ch the pastor called for a, a, a church level fasting like the one we are doing. Amen. And then uh, she came and then she, as she was talking, she said that, well, uh, I've been fasting as well. I said, okay. And then I asked her, what kind of fasting? She said, well, I'm not looking at TV. I decided to turn the TV off. <laughs> Yeah, oh. trust me, people have different kind they of ways. They do, way. all kinds. Or some people will say, no, I'm eating vegetables only. Yeah, or they, they, I don't eat vegetables. I'm eating they, whatever. They will find all kind of, I'm not eating meat. Right. But you're eating fish. Or you're yeah. eating <laughs> vegetables. You, you're eating people. Don't try to be more smart. <laughs> they will eating. find all kind of reason. They will. Yeah. Fasting means no drink, no food. That's right. That's the basic definition. Now, we're going to get into other, I'm going to explain because there's a situation as well, right? There's different kind. But let's talk about how you should conduct yourself when you are fasting. Amen? And we're going to read in Matthew chapter 6, verse, uh, Matthew chapter 6, from 16 through 18. Matthew 6, from 16 through 18. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites. Mm -hmm. With a sad countenance. Mm -hmm. For they disfigure their faces mm -hmm. that they may appear to men mm -hmm. to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, mm -hmm. they have their reward. Okay, you mean what? You mean that if you start broadcasting or advertising your fasting, you already got your reward? No, Amen. it's a diet. As soon as you start boasting, it's telling everybody around, oh, you know what? I'm fasting. Oh, you know what? I have a fasting life. You know what? I do that. Blah, 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 blah. As soon as you bring the, the thing on you, you're not going to get any, That's the fasting reward. is not going to do anything. Amen. Nobody should know that you are fasting unless That's right. you have to tell them. Amen. Because it has to be a secret. And we've already talked about it. It has to be a secret between you and God. Go ahead and read, Pastor Eric. But you, when you fast, mm -hmm. anoint your head and wash your face. Mm -hmm. You know the word, make it so that people don't even know that you're fasting. Amen. So that you do not appear to men to be fasting. But to your father, which is in a secret place. And your father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly. Amen. 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 Uh, yeah. Look, at home, when, I'm, when I take a time to fast, I don't tell my wife. When she's fasting or so, she doesn't even tell me. Amen. Right? Right. And sometimes, I don't even know until evening. Because if I'm not home or whatever, or if there's a food that I got to eat and then I call her one time, two times, she's not saying anything, I know already the code is already there. Amen. And I'm going to take care and eat and then that's it. On the mountain. And vice versa. Right. Amen. Or sometimes she will call me one, two, three times and say, are you fasting? I say yes. And then that's it. Amen. Done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I'm not going to say, hey, you know what? Tomorrow I'm fasting. No. I, she doesn't need to know that. Amen. She doesn't need to know that. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 So, make it in such a way that it doesn't appear that you are fasting. Amen. Keep it at your soul level. Now, if you are in a place where some, you go to somebody, place or whatever, they're inviting you, they're insisting, then you must tell them that I'm on the mountain yes, today. Yes, amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then if you tell them that, don't let them convince you to eat. No. Because I've seen situations like this. Yeah. Where people <laughs> pressure you so much that you start drinking that crazy juice that you decided not to drink. Amen. Don't do amen. that. No. Don't let people convince you. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, amen. So the attitude matter. Okay? I also want to talk about, um, in the Bible, let's talk about the list of people, uh, some of them, example of people who fasted, because it's important to understand that we are not talking about something that it's out of reach. Yeah. Amen? People in the Old Testament and New Testament did that. Amen? Moses, let, let's see the example of Moses. Exodus chapter 34, 28. We're going to go quick. Exodus 34, 28. Exodus 34, 28. So when he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights, he neither ate bread nor drank water. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Amen. Moses did that 40 days. 40 days. You, we are asking you for even one day, you're making all kind of excuses. Amen. And he say here that no drink and no bread, no food, amen, for 40 days. Hallelujah. Another example is the example of Queen Esther. Uh, let's go in Esther chapter 4, verse 16. Esther chapter 4, verse 16. Esther chapter 4, verse 16. Amen. Esther chapter 4, verse 16. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. She also um, were involved in fasting as well. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. amen. If you have it, Esther chapter 4, verse 16. Go gather all the Jews who are in present in Sushan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. See, that's the definition of fasting. Read again, Pastor Eric. Go gather all the Jews who are present in Sushan uh -huh. and fast for me. And fast for me. Neither now, eat now, nor drink. Neither eat nor drink. Amen. Neither eat nor, nor drink. drink. For yeah. how many days? For three days. Three days. The more you are aggressive in your fasting, the more the devil will leave you alone. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, we're going to go and read a, a, another example is David. David, uh, we're going to read the second Samuel, second Samuel chapter 12, 14 through 16. Second Samuel chapter 12, 14 through 16. Second Samuel chapter 12, 14 through 16. How be it because he, how, however, because by his deed you have given great occasion to the enemy of the Lord to blaspheme the child. Also who was born to you shall surely die. Then Nathan departed from his house, and the Lord struck the child of Uriah, wife of David, born to David, and he became ill. David therefore pleaded with God. David fasted and went in and laid all night on the ground. So we see here that David also fasted. Uh, we're going to see another person, a woman. Her name is Anna. Amen. Luke chapter 2, verse 36, 37. Luke chapter 2, 36, 37. Now, look at the people who have been fasting so far. Moses was being uh, called by God to lead God's people. Am I correct? Amen. Okay. Esther was the queen. Yes. Right? Yes. David was a king. So these people have a high rank in the society, but still they are fasting. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Indeed. Amen. It is important to yes, fast, my is. brother. Amen. Anna, uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 36, 37. If you found, you can go ahead and read. Now, there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Penel, 
and of the tribe of Asher. Asher. She was of great age and okay. had lived in, with her husband. Great age mean what? Very old. She was old. So, so far the example we give about Moses was a leader. David was a leader. Esther was a leader. Now we're talking about a woman. Amen. Right? So far we talk about three men. No, two women. And then we're going to talk about the third one. So two men, two women. The second woman, she's what? Of great age. She was old. Yes. It, which means that the age should not be something that we have to use as a reason not to fast. Amen. Yes. She was old. But let's see. We keep going. And had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And the woman was a widow about 84 years. How old is she? 84 she? years old. 84 years old woman. She's fasting. And Amen. you, you are in your 20s and you're trying to get into all kind of reason. Amen. <laughs> Keep turning around. You got all the energy and you, you're afraid of. That woman was 84. 84. Yeah, praise the Lord. So remove that. Uh, Demonic concept from your mind that said Amen. that somehow if you fast, you're going to die. Amen. And indeed, if you want to live a long life, uh, you have to fast. Yes. The people from Utah, it That's has been right. shown uh, medically in the United States that they live longer than any other people That's from right. any other state. You know why? Because the Mormons are in their culture, in the Mormon, uh, whenever the article, the doctrine, they have to fast once a week. Amen. And so the fasting, in fact, indeed, it has been shown that it brings the high blood pressure down. All the right. cardio, whatever sickness related to the heart is, uh, is at the low level because of uh, the fasting. fasting. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's right. Food also kills. It does. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anyway, we got, so she was uh, 80 what? Four years 84 old. 84 years old, and she was fasting. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. The, the list is long. We have example. Of, we won't be able to read them all because of the time's sake. We have a people of Nineveh, right? Remember when Jonah arrived there, he told them that uh, three more days and you guys, everybody, whatever, you, God is going to kill everyone, right? And then what happened? The king called for a fasting. And when the king called for a fasting, what happened? At the end of God, change his mind. And then as a result, they will be able to be saved. Fasting can make God change what he decides to do. Why? Because God loves fasting. Amen. God is always close Amen. to the people who are fasting. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please don't be addicted to food. Amen. Be addicted to fasting. The devil distanced himself from the people who are addicted to fasting. If you love fasting, the devil will leave you alone. Oh, amen. If you do not love fasting, the devil is going to fellowship with you. That's right. Because he cannot stand fasting. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another example is the Paul and, the, and the, the disciples in the book of Acts. And maybe let's go there quickly and read Acts chapter 13 from verse 13. Uh, 2 and 3. Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. Verse 2 and, and 3. Acts chapter 13, verse 2 and 3. And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So you can see in the New Testament, it's about also fasting. Amen. So where the whole concept of uh, we're not fasting nowadays come from? Can somebody explain me that? Why are we not seeing people fasting anymore? What Amen. is the problem with that? Amen. The food the we eat every day, and it looks like the more we eat, the more we need to eat every day. Amen. But we are being eating that food, and the problem also is still there. It's still there. Why not stop eating a little bit? For Amen. the problem to go. Amen. That's right. What's wrong with uh, fasting? 
Amen. Tell me that. Amen. It's everything happened in your mind. Look, you have to have muscle in your mind. Amen. No, I seriously. Like you have to have muscle here. Show to the devil that you are strong, that when you make a decision, you go through that decision. Yes, amen. I can tell you, my brother, my sister, you are not going to die. Please, no, pass. you're not going not to die. die. No. No. Hallelujah. The Lord no. will not let you die. And fasting, no. look, it's like exercise. We're going to get there. I'm going to give you some tools for people who are not used to it because it has to start somewhere. It's like chicken and egg. You can say, no, I can't do it. <laughs> well, the reason why you cannot do it is because you have to do it. Because by just saying you cannot do it, that means it's a problem. Yeah. Everybody understand right. what I'm saying? Amen. If you, as, a, as a, somebody who's a member of the body of Christ, somebody who is a member of the kingdom of God, and all the people, including Jesus Christ, did it, and you say you cannot do it, that means we need to pray for you. Yes, right. Amen. No, I got to tell you the truth. It means we need to pray for you. Amen. Because Jesus said that some kind of demon can only go if oh, you pass. And you say, no, I cannot God. do it. That means you want to sit in your problem. See, amen. Everybody who come to me and ask for a situation that requires a prayer, I will always ask you, I won't fast for you. I'm going to say, we, you and me, we both have to fast. Amen. No. Amen. Get involved you with get me involved. so that we yes. can do it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. If amen. you really want the problem to go, you got to get involved. Yeah, you must be involved. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, again, um, Jesus fasted. It's in the Mat Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 2. Right? And if you leave, the whole context is there. But let's go ahead there, Pastor. Very quickly, we're going to read Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Matthew 4, 1 and 2. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit mm -hmm. into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Okay, Jesus is about to be tempted by the devil. But look at what's happened. What Jesus is going to do. Keep going. And when he had fasted 40 days okay, and that, 40 that nights. That means that if you don't fast, you're going to fall in temptation. Jesus was about to be tempted by the devil. Amen. But what Jesus is going to do first is going to go and strengthen his spiritual position. Amen. I mean, Jesus is God. We all understand that. Right. But I'm giving illustration so that we can see as a human what we need to do. is boosting the system by yes. go and fast first. Hallelujah. Because Jesus Christ knew very well mm -hmm. that uh, nobody, nothing can resist to somebody who is fasting. fasting. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Every time the flesh influence get diminished, God influence get yeah. up. Amen. When you fast, your flesh gets weak. Weaker. And when your flesh gets weak, God's spirit in you gets strong. stronger. Hallelujah. For you cannot have yes. both stronger at the at same, same time. time. It Hallelujah. has to be a switch. Every time your, fle your flesh is struggling in fasting, that means that spiritually speaking, there's a lot of good things that is happening. Hallelujah. Because your flesh has to be yes. quiet <laughs> for God to operate. Yes, good thing. Hallelujah. 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 So it's good to hear the stomach. It's good. It's a good when the thing. stomach is crying like this, yes, it means God and Joseph are walking. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. So Praise rumble Lord. on. Yeah, let Amen. them complain. Rumble on. Yes. The stomach is complaining. The Bible <laughs> says the food and the stomach is going to go where they come from. Yes, that's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. We, we need to keep going. So it is important to add fasting in your spiritual life. Now, the question is, how often we should fast? That's the next important yeah. question. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27, talk about it. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27. How often should we do it? Second Corinthians 11, 27. If you are there, you can read. In weariness and toil, in sleepiness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Amen. So who is speaking here? Paul. Paul. Read just the part that is talking about fasting. Fastings often. You have to do that often. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look, let me explain you this. As I said, there's a power in fasting. 
Amen. We have that wrong concept that we have to fast when there's problem. Amen. It's not true. If you only fast when there's problem, you are playing defense. Because the devil already dropped a problem, you are working harder to remove a problem from your side, which I fully understand. But you have to be able to fast even when there's no problem. No problem. Amen. Then you pray offense. You, 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 you preventing the problem to even land there. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So Hallelujah. we have to do that very often. Often. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, let's read uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. 1 Corinthians 7, 5. 1 Corinthians 7, 5. Do not deprive one another except with the consent for a time that you may give yourself to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you from your lack of self-control. So again here, they are really referring to fasting. Amen. There's so many different areas in your Bible that the Bible is talking about fasting. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you must do that very of often. often. Now, let me say this to everyone as we are concluding. Uh, the Bible said that God works six days and rested the seven day. Once a week, we come to church. Am I correct? That's correct. Every Sunday, we come to church. Amen. I'm going to ask you to fast once a week. Amen. Give one day out of a seven Hallelujah. to God. Yes. Feel free to pick whatever day works for you. Amen. Eat six days and then seven days just have a dinner. I'm not even asking you to fast the, the whole entire 24 hours. Amen. Amen. There were a lady who is uh, in Pakistan. And uh, she connects with our ministry. We have a good contact with her. She comes from an area where uh, in the village uh, they are surrounded by uh, Muslim people anyway. So story short, one day uh, I took a fasting time with her. And then as we are fasting, I was referring to the fasting closing at 6 p.m. As we do in America. Amen. You know what she said? She said, no, pastor, in Pakistan, we, when we, every time and in, in every single church, the fasting is 24 hours. Amen. I opened my eyes. I said, thank you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. See that? They do that 24 hours. It means what? No breakfast, no lunch, no dinner either. Whatever time you start, if you start at 6 a.m., it's the next day at 6 a.m., that you're going to have food. Right. Hallelujah. I was blessed Amen. by that. Amen. Hallelujah. But here, when we even ask you to skip breakfast, oh my God, it's already a problem. <laughs> oh man. Jesus Christ. Oh boy. <laughs> In the previous <laughs> ministry, we have a, a sister that we know there when we Pastor Ruth was there. And uh, one day she was talking about fasting. She said, well, pa she said well, when I fast, I get nervous. I get very, angry. very angry. <laughs> and then, get so angry. therefore, I stay in my room because I, I can yell on people easily. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> Amen. Anyway, we need to continue. Amen. But we have to do that very often. Please give one day out of seven to God. Yes, Lord. It works very, very, very well. Yes, Lord. Oh, my God. Do that. You're going to see doors getting open oh, and open God, and open. Thank you. You can fasting. just eat the whole entire Our week whole like this. Life away. I'm, I'm, I'm not even asking you to give a majority to your soul. Give just one day to your soul. Amen. And let the flesh get, get six. Amen. 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 And then for if you for some of you, I'm not saying you should limit to one. I'm saying minimum yes. one. Minimum. Now it depends on people because fasting is like exercising. The more you do it, the more you feel that you should do it, and the more you don't feel that it's difficult. It's yes, like people amen. who run. The more they run, the more they have the habit of running. But right. if you have to start, if you don't do it, you, you will never be able to do it. That's if you don't right. even want to try, you right. won't be able to do it. You won't do it. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. So now the other thing is this. If you are not used to fast, as we are concluding, conclusion of the matter, that's my personal way of, do, of doing that because we have to be wise. Amen. Uh, I'm not asking people to do the same way. Somebody who has been fasting 40 years, 30 years, right. it's not like somebody who is at the entry level. Right? Amen. Okay. Yeah. So what happened is we have a typically three meals a day, right? Right. Somebody who have never experienced that. Uh, yeah. Yes, indeed. I don't think that is why. I mean, if they can, because let me say this before I say that. Fasting is an offering. Never Amen. do something. Never feel obligated to do it. That's right. Never let anybody push you to fast. Amen. Because as soon as it doesn't come from you, it doesn't count. Let That's me repeat right. that again. Yes. As soon as in your heart, you not really, you don't want to do it, and you do it, it does not count. It's same thing like offering. If you give your offering, you got to give that with gladness. Yes, indeed. So it has to flow from your heart. Yes, That's why amen. we don't push people to do it. That's right. Amen? Amen. But uh, my recommendation is please do it because you want to be able to deal with all kind of demons. Right? Yes, now, amen. somebody who's not used to it, you can ask that person uh, what, what, what I suggest. Most of the time, I will say, okay, you never done that. He said, no, I never done that. Okay, I say, well, Okay, so tomorrow, if you're going to start tomorrow, skip breakfast and have lunch Amen. and dinner. And dinner. Week number one. It doesn't mean I'm going to leave you there. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. The first week, we're going to have no breakfast. You're going to have lunch, lunch and dinner. Yeah. Week number two. We're not going to work next month to do that. No. The second week, we, we are there. That's right. No, no, no. Amen. You can't escape. Week number two, we're going to take that lunch there. We're going to push it. Right. This time, you're not going to have your lunch at 12 or at 11. No. Right. We're going to push it. So either four, three, or two. Depend. Right. Amen. But we're pushing it. Week number two, you're going to have no breakfast. Your lunch won't be at 12. It's going to be at 2 p.m. Amen. Week number right. three, yes. we're going to take that 2 p.m. And push it and push to four. Hallelujah. And so within the month, you're going to see that you'll be able to get the loop. And Amen. go all the way to six. No problem. Amen. Because the human body, as myself, I'm a scientist by, by, by training. Human body functions with memory. It does. That's the way it works. Recall. They have memory. It does. I should, look, that's why fasting, a long fasting like the one we are doing here 21 days. The first couple of days, it gets tougher. Why? Because the body is not adjusted yet. That's but right. trust me, the human body is a very good in saving energy. It's learned in, it quickly into the saving mode. Amen. After the couple, two days, three days, that's it. It's going to go by itself. You won't even feel the hungry anymore. Hallelujah. Because the body is very smart. It's going to turn off all the other stuff. Yes, and indeed. then use Thanks to the, the new thing to accommodate, to adjust. Amen. That's the way it works. So yes. do that gradually. Somebody who never fast, don't necessarily ask him, hey, no, let's go the whole entire day, 6 p.m. Hallelujah. If yes. you do that, he may do it, but his heart is not there. So, therefore, it doesn't really change anything because it doesn't come from his heart. That's right. Amen? Amen? So, you can do that two hours increments. Amen. There you two go. Two hours increments. Yes. Once you get to five, six, done. Done. The wall is, uh, of Jericho is no longer there. The Amen. whole thing that is in your mind Hallelujah. is gone. You were able yes. now to achieve something. Yes. And you see that when you get to six or to five, and after you finish it, it won't be a big deal anymore. Amen. The breakfast won't be able to hold you any longer. Hallelujah. The lunch won't be able to hold you any longer. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So do that incrementally. If you have questions, come and talk to us. Recently, I was talking for, for our fasting uh, that we are doing. Um, there were a lady who came and, and, and privately and asked me, she said, well, I'm taking medication, so how do I, I really want to fast, but I'm taking medication. Amen. I said, okay, thank you for asking me this question. Let's see, what do you take? She said, well, I have medication that I take in the morning, and I have medication I yeah. take in the evening. I said, okay, all right. So the whole thing about fasting and medication, it's like chicken and egg, and I got to explain that my brother and my sister, it's important. Uh, you got to find a way around. 
You can't just use the medication right. as an excuse not to fast. That's right. Amen. Because Jesus didn't give any exception when he said this kind can only go by prayer and fasting. He didn't say except something else. Right. Right? So when I look at it, I say, okay, the, more, the medication that you take in the morning, can you take that in the evening? She said, yes, it's once a day, so I can take that in the evening. So, oh, okay. So then what I'm going to recommend you is that take your medication in the evening. Amen. And then fast in the morning. Because what the doctor has been saying that this, this medication has to be taken with right. food. Amen. So then I say, okay, move the medication that you're taking morning in the evening. Now, Amen. okay, I got a point that you don't want to take. Say somebody, I'm just giving you an example. Somebody is taking four different type of medications. Yes. Right? We're not going to ask you to take them all four of them at the same time. Right? Because right. there's a, maybe a reason why the doctor say take this in the right. morning yeah. and take this in the evening. Right? Amen. Okay? I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying that we should uh, focus on medication versus faith. Please listen to me, okay? I, 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 am, I believe that God, with God, all things are possible. But yeah. I'm trying to use wisdom here for people who are taking medication to explain so that they can, can know. So what I told her is that, okay, do your fasting, finish at 5. And when you finish at 5 and you are eating your food, the one that you're supposed to take in the morning, take them at 5. Amen. Okay? Eat. And take the first medication that you're supposed to take in the morning. Right. Now, before you go to bed, I asked her, what, do you, when, what time do you go to bed? I noticed that be between the time where she's going to take the first one, five, yeah. right? To the time where she go to bed, there's about six hours. I said, okay, well, then, then the other one that you were taking early evening, right. push it so that you can take it. And, you know, because when you have that window, you can eat, right? And then uh, eat something later again, right. and then take the second medication. Amen. If you do that, then you're also giving room for God. But you can't just say, no, because I'm, I'm taking medication morning and evening. Yes, I cannot amen. fast. The devil loves to hear that. Yes, he does. He amen? Does. amen? So don't let whatever medication you are taking, don't let that stop you from fasting. Why? Because if you really want to stop taking those medications, guess what you need to do? You got to fast. That's right. Amen. And the devil doesn't want you to stop those medications. That's why he's trying... To find all kind of ways yes. to say that the, the medication, because of that medication, I cannot fast. Well, because of the, the sickness, you got to fast so that you don't take the medication. Right. Amen. Chicken and egg. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to stand our feet and we are going to pray. The power and the necessity of fasting. Fasting, fasting has nothing to do with the culture. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter what is your gender, male or female, young or old, new Christian or old Christian. Everybody must fast because Jesus says so. so t some type goes by fasting and prayer. So be part of this uh, fasting program that we put together. Don't look at the numbers. Because I know when some, when some of you, when you hear 21 days, oh my God, the devil is bringing all kind of his thing in your mind. It's too long. No, take the day as they come, one day at a time. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's pray. We, now we're going to pray about your fasting life. And as I said, if you don't have a routine when it comes to fasting, have a conversation with God. And determine when, what day you think work best for you. And if you are doing one day a week, you have been doing one day a week, add one more day. But you have to, def to define a time where you're going to fast. It's an offering that you're giving to God. It's an, an aroma. Show to God that you're giving him. David said, I am not going to give to God something that does not cost me. The more it costs you, the more blessing you're going to receive from God. Hallelujah. We're going to take a moment of silence and everybody pray for your, for your fasting life. Have a conversation with God. Let him know your desire. You have to manage your spiritual life, your fasting life. A Christian who does not have a fasting life is unbalanced.